The new MacBook Air with the M1 chip, Apple's own silicon ARM-based processor. Ooh, am I excited. <sighs> the initial benchmarks that have hit the web are insane. Like the single core, yeah, but that multi-core score is kind of bonkers. Ooh, but that's what we should be expecting from this new chip, right? Um, well, it's, you know, basically the A14 that's in the iPad Air, that's in the new iPhones, uh, with some tweaks, some extra sauce, which we'll get to in a minute. But I just have to open this guy. Wait, did they bring the sound back? Oh, oh I like that. I was excited before, but when I heard that, ooh, like, did you hear? That was my impression of that sound. It feels so good to type on a MacBook Air with scissor switch keys instead of butterfly keys. We still got the Touch ID up at the top right hand corner. I'm excited because this is actually going to be my first experience with Big Sur as well. I haven't updated this guy yet just because, I don't know, I don't even want to run the risk that things might get messed up, that my workflow might get messed up because I do half my work on this computer. The MacBook Air has physical physical function keys, which I actually really like the MacBook Pro 13, the new one, which I did purchase and I spec'd it out because I was curious how much difference does that memory bump actually make? Cause we're talking about the same M1 chip in the MacBook Air and also that new MacBook Pro 13 inch. This is a bit skinnier with the tapered design and this is a fanless computer. So no fans in this guy. So you might get similar, similar, similar. <laughs> So you might get similar performance out of this MacBook Air and the base spec MacBook Pro, uh, but remind you if this starts to get heated, maybe exporting a video, doing some heavy duty tasks, it has no fans to kick on, so it's gonna throttle that processor when it needs to. So that's one of the benefits of going with that new MacBook Pro 13 inch instead of this, but what we're gonna see Hopefully, if applications run, remember this is a whole new architecture. It's not running on that x86 Intel based architecture. But yes, this is the purpose of this video, the first impressions. I just want to see if the apps I use every day install successfully, run smooth, whether they are built natively for, for the Apple Silicon yet, or if they're having to run through Rosetta. This actually has a more color accurate display than what we've experienced with the MacBook Air. So it's going to be on par with the MacBook Pro 13, uh, but it is 100 nits less bright than the MacBook Pro's uh, display, 400 compared to 500 nits. Um, but I'm very excited that we have that color accuracy in the display. Photographers who don't do as insane tasks as maybe heavy duty uh, videographers, uh, I think this might actually be a really nice light option. Maybe. Oh my gosh, are we in? We're in! Here we go. Oh my god, this is so exciting, right? Because this is the start of something new for Apple. I have been someone who has been super critical about the past few years of MacBooks, the MacBook Pro in particular. You guys know this. But this does get me excited because whether you like it or not, when Apple has more control over something, that's kind of when they thrive. That's their thing. So maybe you have to give up some things to be in the Apple ecosystem, but I really hope this is an example of something that is going to be good. It's going to add speed. It's going to add reliability. Um, you know, of course, it's going to increase the size of those wall garden walls. But for Mac users, I really, really hope it's a good thing. It's obviously a beautiful, uh, sexy computer, if we can call computers that. As an XPS user who's used to the infinite edge display, you know what? I would have loved if they would have come out here and just redesigned the chassis to be more minimal, small, push out the bezels a bit, especially with the MacBook Pro, maybe not the Air yet. Um, so that's me complaining about that, but already people are pushing back people complaining about that, but I'm like, guys, look, that's, I mean, it's a valid complaint, okay? This display is awesome, and it's really pretty, and it's a touch screen, but Apple has iPads, so we're never gonna get a touch screen MacBook. I wish, oh, that is like on the top of my wish list. Okay, I'm gonna stop blabbering. Um, I'm gonna start uh, just using it, installing some applications, and I'll let you guys know how it goes. I don't know if I introed this today. And well, hello, my name is Sarah Dichi, Rhymes with Peachy. If you're new around here, uh, I make cool videos. You should subscribe.
All right, let's 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 get into this guy. Okay, I will be recording this voiceover with the MacBook Air speaker, so let's get into it. You open up the laptop and you have beautiful Big Sur, but you wanna download an application. Let's start from the bad and go to the good. And trust me, there's a lot of good, so please stick around. I am a person who uses Chrome. I love all of my little Chrome extensions, BNH, LastPass. I have an extension that basically speeds up Netflix shows, any type of video I'm watching. So I love Chrome. Chrome was the first app that I installed and you get this little pop-up that says, hey, you need to also install Rosetta that's going to enable you to transition these apps and open up these apps just like they're normal applications and these are for applications that aren't coded to run natively on Apple Silicon yet. So Rosetta 2 is an operating system emulation tool that runs apps compiled for Intel, but then enables them to run on Apple Silicon Macs. So for all of you Chrome lovers out there, I'm sorry, but like Chrome in itself is so slow. It is so slow. I guess at this point, everyone knows Chrome is super RAM intensive. Uh, I had higher hopes for the first application that I installed, but at this point it was just screaming, just use Safari Sarah. It could barely load Twitter. It took multiple seconds after clicking on one of my Chrome extensions for it to do anything. So opening up more complex web pages like Notion just was dreadfully slow. Once you install that first application via Rosetta, you're not gonna get those pop-ups again. So going forward, it's going to be a pretty smooth process of downloading an app like normal. And then Rosetta is just gonna be running in the background so you shouldn't know the difference. The very first day with this machine, I was on the laptop for an hour and then went to bed and then woke up. I didn't charge the MacBook in between then and it lasted another five hours for six hours total. Now, you're probably like, oh, that's not very good battery life. Well, all things considered, it's actually decent battery life, but not in comparison to the 18 hours that Apple is advertising. I was mean the first day. I literally used Chrome the entire time in apps that aren't at all optimized for Apple Silicon. So the next day I fully switched to Safari, but I was still editing videos, editing pictures. I was doing some more intense tasks, but just going from Chrome to Safari alone bumped me up to 9.5 straight hours of battery life. Not 9.5 hours on some benchmark or me leaving the computer on while, you know, setting the brightness of my computer to 50% and letting videos play. No, this was me like on the internet for most of the time streaming Netflix for three hours, working in creative applications and Safari. That's dang good battery life. Okay, so I know we are all curious about Adobe Creative Cloud. So when you download it, instantly you're gonna notice a little beta tag at the top right. On their support pages, they say, okay, we don't have official Apple Silicon support yet, but you could go ahead and run our apps via Rosetta 2 and good luck. Photoshop perform actually pretty well and I would say is on par with what I'm used to. There is a Photoshop beta that does run natively on Apple Silicon right now and they're saying official support is coming early 2021. There was some confusion with people saying Adobe Lightroom Classic wasn't going to have support even via Rosetta and well that's just false. Uh, Lightroom Classic actually ran better on this MacBook Air than it runs on my Intel-based iMac 5K. So you guys know I love my Adobe Creative Cloud, but the most concerning application is for sure Adobe Premiere. And as you can tell, I was screen recording all of this in QuickTime and most of the apps didn't even skip a beat when it came to the QuickTime recording. I tried with recording and without and it really didn't change anything. But Premiere was the one that just needed all of the help possible, so I exited out all of the apps to see if I could get it be a little less sluggish. Of course, I'm throwing 4K footage at it because I want to see if it can handle my everyday workflow and it was just it was pretty stuttery. Usually A7S footage is kind of my marker for how good a computer or a software is doing because 
the XAVCS and XAVCHS Kodaks that are, you know, more compressed than all I do terribly even on fancy computers. So I wasn't exactly expecting, uh, you know, amazing results from it, but I was hoping it could at least shuffle through the 4K footage from my A7 III, which I've never had any problems with on any computers. So I think it's safe to say when it comes to these Apple Silicon Macs, all of the photo apps run great, no complaints at all, but we're gonna definitely have to wait until a native Premiere is developed for Apple Silicon. The fact that DaVinci Resolve 17 already had a beta out before these Macs were even released to the public is super impressive. Now, it's not perfect. Some of my A7S footage wouldn't even pop up in the program, which is obviously a problem. So I had to, you know, file a complaint via the email. But my other 4K footage from the A7 III was just buttery smooth. And as you can see, I am just shuffling forward, backwards, stopping it, shuffling for two times, three times, and it's just smooth like butter. It's actually super impressive from Resolve, but again, I don't know why it wasn't showing my A7S III footage. Uh, you know, it's XAVCS H264 10-bit. Hopefully it's just a bug of some sort and it will get fixed. Uh, remind you, this is beta software. It's not final yet. So when it comes to Adobe and building these apps natively for Apple Silicon, Lightroom Classic will be out next year and the normal Lightroom will be out next month. Photoshop early 2021 and Premiere is just on its way. We don't have a specific date or I could not find a specific date. <laughs> the obvious winner since, well, Apple makes Final Cut Pro was Final Cut. Oh my gosh. I dropped all of my 4K A7S III super compressed footage from the XAVCHS to S to all I and it just did not skip a beat. It shuffled through that footage like it was butter. Now this was anticipated obviously because Apple has had time to develop their own apps natively for this new, you know, processor architecture, but I just had to see it with my own eyes and I was impressed. Final Cut, good job. You're editing really fancy 4K footage on a MacBook Air. I also downloaded other miscellaneous Mac apps like Notion. Uh, it took about 15 seconds to initially load up the first time and then after that, that was actually super, super snappy. Well, hey, I forgot to film an outro, but this is just some initial first impressions from me. I wanted to just go through all of the creative apps I use and also some that I know you guys use to show where we're at right now. I think this is super exciting to see this initial speed from from a MacBook Air is really, really cool. But I would give these laptops just a, a second to get out there to allow for software developers to at least fix some of the issues that are happening with their apps via Rosetta or just get in there and you know develop natively for Apple Silicon. And then when we turn that corner and have all of these apps optimized, it's gonna be awesome. It looks super promising. It's just a slow start. And I think that's kind of what people expected. So I'll keep you guys in the loop. Make sure you're subscribed. Let me know if you like this initial video. And until next time, stay peachy.